Welcome to Model Horse Tag School. My name is Carrie, and today we want to look at feet because we're going to be looking into boots. So let's start with probably your normal ones. This is your Brenda Brer and your, I guess, Ben Brer. These are the eight inch riders. Their feet are almost exactly the same size, okay? So you can use the same boot pattern for them because they're about the same size. There's no reason to go half size these, okay? Then you have, um, this is the seven and a half inch um, where this is the older one, you know, the one with the rubber band and uh, no chest. So he's got about the same feet. Okay, so he's going to use the same boot size. Um, let's see what have we got. This is the seven and a half inch uh, bull rider doll, Mr. Nipples. And so his foot is a little bit bigger. So he will probably need a bigger size boot. So we're gonna put him aside. He's, he, his clothes and everything are, have to be specially done. So we're not covering Mr. Nipples in this. There's pants and shirt for him. I already made one. I didn't make shoes. I don't know if I will. But you definitely need bigger boots for him. I mean, the same thing for the skeleton doll. I mean, his he's like Mr. Nipples. His foot's a little bit bigger, so I, we're not covering Mr. Skeleton. Here's Brenda Brer. She's an 8-inch doll. She's got about the same foot size. Um, here's Ben Brer, the 6-inch. That's 6-inch. Look, his foot. It's about the same length. It's got a little bit more diagonal on it, but it's pretty much the same length and same width. So that means we can use the same size for him. Here's the classic TV toys, teenager, six inch doll. Guess what? His foot is almost exactly the same size as the eight inch doll. Awesome. So that means we can use the same pattern for that one. This is classic TV toys, super articulated six inch doll. Look. Her foot is the same size as the seven, as the eight inch prayer doll. So guess what? We can use the same one for her. This is Brer's six inch doll. Her foot, it looks very square. Um, her foot is the same width, not the same length. But you know what? That foot isn't shaped right. Really, that, that's not a normal shaped foot. It really isn't. I would go ahead and use the same size because she will stand better if she has more foot. So we're gonna use the same size on her. And then the last one is the classic TV toys six inch doll that is not articulated. Remember we had to fix her, her hips and her arms. So she has She's got really pretty feet. She's got belly dancer feet. Hers are teeny tiny. Um, but you know what? Again, in order to help her stand, I would use the same pattern. And um, this is what the pattern looks like in the, in the pack. For this lady here, I, I wanted to put the boots on the outside. Um, so basically, this is made out of tooling leather. Went ahead and tooled my pattern in assembled it and then this is just um you can see there those are just little 1 16th inch leather lace just little tabs um so this is time consuming but you know what it's worth it probably the best pair of boots i've made but you don't have to do them out of tooling leather and you don't have to tool this is not where i would start with this pattern you want to get a feel for the pattern before you do all this work especially if you decide to paint the applique. So that's just tooled in, and then I could paint the applique like red or black or whatever, if you've seen the way boots are. Um, what we're going to do though, is I'm gonna do them in different uh, materials, and then show you how to fit them. All right, so let's talk about the materials. Let's talk about materials. This can be fabric, one, ounce tooling leather it can be um or 1.5 ounce so i want a thin tooling leather uh specifically something if you have to you can skive down even more so you can see here that's a pretty thin tooling leather so that was my calf skin my calf skin is still better than my lamb skin 
um, as far as workability. So the lambskin's good. I like using it, but the calf skin is still better than the lambskin. Um, and then we're going to attempt to, like, I have this, um, I have this uh, skin, uh, eel skin, snake skin, I don't know what it is, but I had some scraps, so we'll do that. Um, we're going to do it in Skyver, and then I'm going to do it in faux leather. So experiment, because I've made these out of ultra suede um, fabric, um, obviously a lot in the tooling leather because I wanted to get to a point where I could tool in a pattern. For the heel and the sole, so this is your outer sole and your heel, and you can see here, so we, we stack we stack these um, here onto the back. Um, I, I didn't run into anything else that I thought would work as well as the tooling leather though. And then we have thin cardboard. So uh, most food packaging is a nice thin cardboard. I have two different thinnesses here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this is an outer carton. This is actually better. We want something lightweight, strong, thin. This is kind of nice. I was using it uh, when I first started, but it does have a tendency to bend when I'm working with the um, with the, the material, some of the material. So a thicker cardboard than, than this one, but you just, you need something thin and workable. And like I said, this is just a food, a uh, box for food. So this guy needs a pair of black boots. And um, this is a suede, I'm sorry, this is a, like a fake, a faux leather, because um, a lot of people would prefer that to skiving. So we're gonna, do this out of a faux leather. You really want something that's going to take well to glue though because we glue this, we don't sew it. And um, you can see pulling the paper off. Now um, for the uh, the sole, oh, I've got extra here. Huh. Well, it was somewhere. Um, you, ha you get to choose whether it's going to be round or if it's going to be pointed. Um, they're both equally challenging so I would um, you could decide what you want to do um, cowboy boots can be either and um, these don't just have to be cowboy boots I guess that's what I'm trying to say these can be any boots and the first step with all of them is we got to get the um, the upper to fit on the um, onto the sole so what I usually do so we're gonna put some glue on the tip there and this is the cardboard and you can have it in either direction it's not going to be seen so we're gonna go ahead and put that just right on the tip and we're going to let that set up because depending upon what kind of cardboard you have, like this here is a colored cardboard, so it's not going to, the glue is not going to stick as fast. So then we'll do the other upper. And our seam allowance is really tiny. Keep that in mind. We're not going to use a lot around this edge because it'll just create a lot of bulk. Okay. And then once we're pretty sure it's secure, we'll pull this back. And I'm going to turn this so that it's straight. See that? So it's straight with the sole. And I want to glue down all of that. Yeah, it's not a lot of um, what you would consider seam allowance. And like I said, it really is helpful if you have materials that take well to glue.
Now on a real shoe at this point, they would, they would actually start sewing the sides, but we're not gonna do that. If that's something you wanna do, you could sew the sides so it's like a zigzag lace pattern. It's helpful to look at how they make real shoes when you're doing this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and push this over to this side. Now notice now we've almost have a slipper there. And we want to then do the same thing over here. Let's go ahead and get this. If you notice, I'm only going back to just behind, just at the start of the heel. I recommend you make these so they do not come off. Um, don't plan on taking them off and sharing them, you know, to multiple dolls. So we're going to do the same to this other one, and then we're going to just let the glue dry. And you can see here why um, this, if this is tooling leather, you need to make sure that you've skived just the edge. Uh, because if you skive the whole thing, your tooling pattern will, will fall through. And if you've tooled enough, you understand that. You can't um, carve through um, a thin leather. So see, I'm just pulling the, um, the slipper part back. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside, let that dry. We'll take our pieces here, and um, I haven't dyed this yet, but I, I would dye this normally so that it's the color of the shoe, or if I want a contrast, um, and that's up to you. So I, what I'll probably do is, um, I'll get this assembled, I'll get it carved, and then I'm gonna dye it, okay? So um, this actually is the bottom. That's the, that's what you, they walk on, right? So that means um, we're going to glue these heels because they're going to walk on those heels. So I need to put two on there. So I get, um, you know, most cowboy boots have some, um, you know, heel to them so that they stay in the stirrup. Um, you can, you know, you could just do regular shoes with this. I'll show you that in a little bit. This, this does not have to be boots either. It can just be shoes. So there's a little indent in the pattern um, that I recommend using so that you know where to put your heel. And try to get that, you know, level all the way around.
Okay. Now technically you could leave it right like that if you wanted to, but usually the, um, the uh, heel actually goes at an angle. So depending upon how brave you are, get a good strong razor knife. This is the number 25 blade. And be careful not to hurt yourself. And you need to make sure that's put it at an angle and then just carve it. See how I'm carving it? And then put it this way. And now we've got a slightly, um, you know, beveled heel. And this is another reason why I wouldn't just start right off doing the tooling, is you got to get a feel for the pattern, because that tooling is a lot of work. It's tiny. It's very delicate. I enjoyed it very much, by the way, making those boots. I will probably make another pair pretty soon. All right. So now these are ready to uh, to dye, and I'm going to dye them black. And now I'm going to work on getting to the same. Um, now I'm going to work on getting to the same exact uh, place in the pattern with these other two materials. Now I already know. From experience that this here doesn't take well the glue so that's going to be kind of fun um, and it doesn't bend as well but it should look really cool you know once it's done and this is a really thin sky but it's actually too thin so this should be really easy to, to do all right I'll be back okay if you want to do the square it's actually a little easier on the round but it's really the same thing so the square has the cut um, I guess we'd call it a pointed shoe so we're gonna do basically the same thing all along there and see how easy it is when you got something that takes well the glue oh I love Skyver and then same thing on this side and you might actually find it easier than the round just make sure that you square the sole to make sure that the sole is squared as well okay we're gonna take these soles and we're going to kind of work them see how that so I picked round because his feet are so big. You, you might even want to modify his feet because he's got really wide feet. But we're going to push his pants up. These are going to go inside. And um, we're going to make sure they fit. All right, that's good. So we didn't get him too tight. You can see right where the toes are. So it's wide enough for him. Now, I take these. Wow. <laughs> Just make sure the right side is out. Make sure your um, rounded edge is up. We're just going to fold it in half so we know where center is. And we're going to... Um, Lay a bead of glue right along the edge. We'll do that on both sides. And then on the shoe itself, we need to lay a little bit of glue on this tab here that helps to hold the whole thing together. And then the 
fun part. Put that in there. But we need to make sure they don't have it too far in there. And I like to use a stylus to push from the inside. And we don't want it down too far. Just want the edge. Black is so hard to see. It just moved on me. Yeah, I really prefer working with leather. Again, for the other side. Yeah, so let me get a foot. I'm going to put this on. I don't recommend you take them off once they're on. Okay. And we're going to try and go halfway, so not all the way, to get halfway along that heel. So we need to get the other one to go halfway on too. So you see how they're both on there. And hopefully they'll stay. And then we're going to, yeah, this stuff is rolled in the opposite direction. So this is gonna be really interesting to force in there. Now we're trying to get those to go now we need to fold one side over and just that little area, that little lip, that's what we're going to close over. It's the first time I've used this fabric to make boots. So, very interesting. Don't like this fabric for boots. You really don't know until you do it, you know? But the fact that it wants to roll the way it does, that's bad. So, we got our heel, and let's go ahead and close that up. I might actually need a clamp there. Well, of course, I threaten it with a clamp, and then it's fine. to do the same for the other foot. Okay, so now I can just go ahead and slip the pants over it. If you want to put any more detail, in fact, you don't have to make them this, this tall. Um, at least this way you know they're not going to they're not going to slip out from under the pants. Right? 
Okay, now we want to feel along and make sure there aren't any high spots. Um, glue them down or trim them off because it will make a difference on your final product. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. And then here, there was a little bit, but um, it's okay. I don't see anything from the front that's going to cause an issue. So I'm good. I'm good there. Might get rid of some of the hairs. And so now we're going to glue on our sole. I also did a finished coat on this black because it's that USMC black that, ugh, horrible. All right, so we want to make sure. Now we can trim it a little bit if we have to, that sole. But we want to make sure it's as centered as possible and it's okay if there's a little bit of sole overlapping. In fact, um, there's some shoes that actually have two rows of stitches uh, that help stitch the, the upper to the sole. So it's okay to have some sole on the outside. And then same thing here, we're gonna look for anything that needs to be either trimmed or glued down. Go ahead and the most important point of this right now is to get that sole all the way from the heel to attach to the boot. And I don't have a clamp that can do what my fingers are doing right now, so I'm just gonna kinda hold it until it's dry. Okay, so for my, um, for these boots, I went and I painted the soles gold. So they should, they should blend. They should blend pretty good. And then for these brown ones, um, they're um, dyed brown, um, actually edge coated in a dark brown. So they're gonna be a little bit darker Okay, so those are the shoes. These are made out of a faux leather. These are made out of Skyver. These are made out of like a, a lizard skin. And then these are made out of tooling leather. Um, same process for all of them. I really think the tooling leather is the best material to use. But any of these others will work depending upon what you have so that you can make yourself a pair of boots. Thank you for spending time with me today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and have yourself a really good day.